United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Personal appeals part one. If anyone has a personal appeal, please approach a podium and sign in. State your name and uh, where you're from, and you have five minutes for your appeal. All right, five minutes begin before or after I sign in? <laughs> <laughs> when you start talking. And your pen, I think it just ran out. <laughs> Can you get Sorry. One in the budget? My name is Beverly Plosa Bowser. I am coming to uh, introduce myself to yourself and everyone else in the room, as well as folks back here in the audience. I'm running for state representative in the 131st district. My background is I'm a retired Air Force colonel, 30 years. Um, my husband, as well, we've raised five children. I grew up in the Pennsylvania area. Um, in Montgomery County and in Bucks County. I currently live in the 131st over in Upper Hanover. Um, as I was saying earlier, just jog across into Lehigh County and then jog, go back home when, I, when I'm doing my workouts for my triathlons. So um, I have not held elected office before. I retired from the Air Force in 2010. After coming home, I was in, deployed to Baghdad for um, six months working with the senior Iraqis. Um, came back to Colorado, where we had lived at the time. Moved back to the Pentagon area, where my husband was still working. And we began searching for our home here in Pennsylvania, knowing that this is where I want, we wanted to retire, because I have family all around the area, including north of the district, east, south, and west of the district. So I just, I brought some business cards that I uh, can leave with everyone in the room. In addition, I'm seeking uh, signatures, so if anybody is willing to sign a petition, I would appreciate knowing that you would sign and I can meet with you later on to do so. On the Montgomery County side, they did hold, um, on the Re Republican uh, committee held endorsement convention, and I, received the endorsement over the incumbent. Um, there were 12 committee members there eligible to register the vote. Eight out of the 12 did vote for me. So I may be new to all the folks here in this room, but I have at least um, established good rapport with my neighbors there in East Greenville, Pennsburg, uh, Red Hill, and Upper Hanover Township area. My husband and I also operate a bed and breakfast over there and since we both retired as colonels, it's called the Double Eagle Bed and Breakfast. So you are more than welcome to uh, look us up online and come pay a visit if you want to get out of the big city of Allentown. <laughs> so and does anybody have any questions of me? Or? No, I, I don't wish know if you I've the done best this right or wrong. Nice I'm, to meet you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Can I have a copy of your uh, your business card so I can get the correct spelling of your name, please? Absolutely. Thank I you. have several cards here. Is it appropriate that I just hand everybody a card? Just, just hand one. I can just go around the room and do that? She, I would like one. She could do that. <clears throat> thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else with a public appeal? Thank you. Hearing none, that leads us to community minute. Does anybody have a community minute to bring forward? Sure. Yeah. Brent, I will. I'll, I'll throw something Thank out you. So, Good. you know, today was a balmy near 70 degrees, and uh, just a few days ago we had nearly seven inches of snow. And, um, just want to thank our, our crew that was out there from Public Works. They did a great job. They were out there um, at night, I saw, and um, getting everything ready for the following morning. Um, the roads look great, and just thank them for their hard work and efforts. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Special presentations. We have none. 
Reading of the minutes, uh, would somebody like to make a motion to recommend the public hearing minutes from February 5th? Councilman Barrett, second by Councilman Dufresne. Any questions or discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Then we need a motion to uh, approve the council meeting minutes from February 5th. Is there a motion to Councilman Shipsta? Second. Councilman Barrett. Questions, discussion, or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. There are no decisions on bids. Communications, we received a lengthy letter from Susan Seibert from 27 Spruce Street with regards to trash collection uh, issues. She mentioned quite a few, and there are a lot of them that are re reoccurring in the borough, but also brought up an issue that we will be uh, um, actually, I don't know how you want to say it, but we'll, we'll be moving forward with uh, taking care of it, hopefully. And uh, we received a letter from Paul Miller, Active Learning Center in Lehigh Valley Martial Arts, requesting the use of the triangle for the World Chai Chi Day, which I believe is a recurring. They had it last year. Yeah. Last yeah. Year. So I'll refer that to staff. I think there's nothing that we need to provide for them. Uh, it's usually like 30 to 50 people. And then we have a letter from Megan Reed, our, our Emmaus Main Street manager, requesting a banner fee waiver. Um, and that's for the restaurant week, East Penn Restaurant Week, oh. which we have a event form on your desk. Would somebody like to make a motion to waive the fee banner? I mean, the banner fee for um, the Main Street program. Main Street part Partners and East Penn Chamber, to be more specific. I don't think Councilman happens. Barrett, seconded by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Question. Discussion? Yep. Um, have we previously waived the fee? I mean, this is a different, I, I know they held this event, but they did not have a banner previously, I don't recall. So I was curious uh, as to the well, I think, status quo of that. I think um, historically we've been waiving fees for the Main Street program. Am I correct on that? Well, yeah, and, and one thing that I would say is this necessarily isn't for the Main Street program. Um, this is for the restaurants in general. Okay. So I mean, although they're you know they're they're behind it, um, I, I I would look at this as this isn't necessarily something for them. It's it's for the restaurants in general. But uh, I I do believe that you did waive it last year, or, or maybe they didn't have a banner last year. I don't remember a, a banner. Well, that's I what I was really trying to come up with. I mean, I think it's always easiest on these types of things for to find past practice. And I don't this, think they, I don't think that banner last didn't, year. But I believe that when they've done the summer festival or the end of summer festival there's been a banner and that has been waived am i yes. correct so i think that would fall into past practice yeah and that, i guess that's just what i wanted to ensure is that we had some okay. sort of <clears throat> we're following a guideline and not just throwing it out there anybody yeah. else all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 those opposed say no there are seven eyes okay. all right um and then also under communications on your desk, there's the uh, event information sheet for Mayor's Rotary Club's motorcycle ride for veterans on May 12th. I'm going to refer this to the Parks and Recreation Committee as this is a first time event, so we will address that in committee. Uh, that's it for communications, unless somebody else has something to bring forward. Hearing none. There's no borough engineer's report. Solicitor's report. Uh, very briefly, Mr. President, uh, the briefs have been filed in the <coughs> police grievance arbitration. When I say briefs, our brief has been filed. We're waiting for their brief. Uh, it's a complex issue. Uh, I, I know Shane has a copy of it. I don't know whether it was distributed to all of you. If you wish it, we can, you can read it. Um, I wrote 99% of it. Uh, Pat Harvey made some changes to it at the end, and it has been filed. I have also spent a great deal of time trying to uh, understand totally your sewer system. Uh, it is uh, unusual, let's put it that way. I finally have all of the agreements, that includes Salisbury, Upper Milford, 
Laura Mukunji, LCA, and a series of Allentown agreements. All of them will be reduced uh, to digital format. You'll have them all, but this last memo uh, really lays it out and lets you know exactly the issues that we're facing and how we'll have to go about it. Uh, so uh, I, I know it's a pain to read page after page of this complicated stuff. 47 but, to be exact, Jeff. Well, but yeah. some of it, some of those are exhibits, yeah, thank God. Uh, I think it's like 12 pages for the, the meat. Oh, okay. So hopefully it'll put you on track. And uh, right now there's an EPA meeting set for March 23, uh, where they're going to try to discuss what to do with the administrative orders with EPA. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, unfinished business part one, new business, unfinished business part two, items not on the, well, we have none of those items. And the items not on the agenda, does anybody have anything to bring forward? <coughs> Hearing none, unfinished business part two, I mean, I'm sorry, marriage report. No, thank you. <laughs> um, just information, uh, February 5th, the equipment for Project Lifesaver was used, and it was used successfully. We had an individual that wandered away from his residence. Um, it was 24 degrees out. He left with one shoe and no coat. So from the time the officers were dispatched until they found him and got him returned home was 25 minutes. So I'm very proud of the department, and I'm thankful for that equipment that we do have and we can use it. Other than that, it the, works. It works. I think it was it on works. W, w It was on the news last, last night. night. Yeah, news. Channel 69 had a That's blurb right. on it. So um, it was <clears> successful, <throat> and I am glad we have it. Might have saved his life. Absolutely. Hey. I report progress. Thank you. That's good news. Committee reports. Public Works Chairman Anders. Uh, yes. We do not have anything for official action. Um, we discussed several <coughs> issues as this was our first meeting for the year. Um, as, as you can see in the notes, um, we did have our lift truck issue, which has been fixed, um, and the Christmas tree removed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we have that. We also discussed a, our project timeline for 2018, and John's going to um, update us on that. Um, as you'll see the different projects in there. Um, he gave us an update on our, uh, our manpower and hiring, um, and also we discussed snow plowing and some things with that. Um, besides that, you can read the goals and the, um, the other items in the notes. With that, I'll report progress. Thank you. Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee, Chairman Shipsta. Yes, uh, nothing for official action this evening. Our, our next meeting is scheduled for February 28th at 4.30 in Council Chambers. Progress. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Baumgartner. Um, okay. So we <coughs> talked about the Park City Grant Resolution. Is that something that we need to take action on? Yes. Should we do that first? or? Okay. This um, so this is a... An, jump in because you know far more than I do, but this is a, um, a grant that will support us to fund a study to evaluate the parks and see what our needs are so we can develop a long-term plan. Yeah. Um, so pr prior to <coughs> taking office and, and, and Mrs. McMahon and taking office, uh, Borough Council talked about this extensively. Um, writing the grant application will be Barry Eisen and Associates. They're already working on it. Um, we now have a cost estimate in place to what, what it would take to do what we asked them to do, and that is the complete park study as well as assessing the trail systems and trying to do connectivity. Uh, all in all, the cost would be at between ninety and ninety-five thousand uh, dollars, with us being responsible for fifty percent of that. Now that would be spread over a couple of years, but uh, uh, so we would ask that you. And Shane, did we budget anything for this year? Well, we don't need to. Oh. Um, we, we were going to actually we right. have budgeted the entire cost of, of our share but um, since it takes them until November or December to even approve the grant uh, we would need to budget for next so year. So we're looking for next year yeah. okay. Um, so the resolution that you would be adopting is A to go out for the grant but also B that you're <coughs> committing to pay 50 percent of that study. Okay. Um, there's not going to be the, the thing that we did a couple years ago and that was you know we, we applied for it and then you know, we were getting ready to be awarded, and we said, eh, we don't have the money to do it. So, okay. um, 
So is there a motion to, uh, oh. I, had a, I can bring it up during discussion if you okay. want. Okay, is there a motion to approve resolution 2018-9? Councilman Anders? Yes. Second by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Questions or discussion? And Councilman Barrett. If I'm correct, I mean, basically, this, by getting this, is what allows us to, in the future, go for much bigger grants that allow to pay for those big projects. Well, right? and, and yeah, and, and as everyone's aware, um, you know, we have aging infrastructure in our park system. And I mean, it's getting to the point where we need to start showing out some major money. Um, in order for us to be able to uh, apply for DCNR construction money, uh, we have to have a DCNR approved study done. Mm -hmm. So you have to do one to be eligible to apply for the other. Right. So in a lot of ways, this is, it's, I mean, I think it's a considerable amount of money up front right now, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, this is a small amount compared to how many, if we wanted to replicate that at all the different parks and do the investment that we think is necessary for them, it would be thousands and thousands of dollars more than this well, amount. Yeah, correct. So, I mean, if you think of, um, let's just look at, at Lions Park. That equipment needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. That's $70,000 of equipment right there, easily, easily, that would need to be spent. Mm -hmm. You know, park equipment, commercial park equipment, just for that merry-go-round out there that was donated to us, was $7,000. Um, because you, ha you, you know, it's not like building the place in your backyard. Um, which you know I know anything all about. about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to buy a commercial grade, and it has to meet code, and uh, it's expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. So, um, you know, in order to, to get the funding or to be eligible to apply for the funding, you have to do the other part first. So, and, and remember, the timeline for this, it's a year for the application process, um, and then it's a very public process, which is nice about this, this program. It's not just hire a consultant and they do everything. Like, they have to involve the public, have all sorts of public meetings, but it takes two years for that study to be conducted. So you can actually spread that budget out over probably two years um, to fund it. So um, it's, a very, it's a very good process. And if you hire the right consultant, um, it can be a very rewarding process. Cool. My question is, after the actual study is finished, how long is that good for applying for grants? Is uh, it, I'm going to guess five years? Usually it's five years. Yeah, okay. Usually they're, they're good for five years. So that allows us over a five-year period to do what we want to do. Yeah, well, and, and if, it's, if it's one of those things where it's a comprehensive, like we're doing it phase by phase by phase, it's probably better. It's probably, it'll probably last for longer than that. I mean, if it takes two years to do the study, that's 2020. We're not looking, we're looking at 2021 until we do anything. Yeah, and our discussion during budget workshop uh, was, look, we can, you know, spend the money in the study and try to get funding for, for construction money or... We need to start putting the money in now to do some of these major major projects. Yeah, I think it's a good investment. Spend a little to make a lot. So. I mean, right now, you know, we're, we're spending the money, and you guys are budgeting the money, and we appreciate it to do repair work. Um, but that's not, you know, there's, there's some major needs that we need to address. And this, this will get us... And, then, and also, like, bathrooms at parks, if we want to put bathrooms, we're, we're discussing a couple places, and yeah. just all those items can be addressed through, through grant money. It will not address the pool. Um, pool studies are, are a, uh, they're their own, they're their own thing. Um, and, and just in a pool study, you're talking probably $40,000 for a pool study itself. And, and, and quite honestly, I don't think we need to do that at this point. I think we need to, we need to worry about other stuff. Yep. Any other questions or discussion on the uh, grant? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. <coughs> Um, just to sum up other things we discussed. So we discussed the need to develop a long-term plan. So um, if we do go forward with the study, then that'll give us a good sense of where, where to begin from there for a long-term plan. Um, and then in the meantime, discussing short-term goals for the next two or three years. And we'll invite um, some people to our next meeting to get their take on what our needs are so that we can try and prioritize what we need to take care of. Um, Having food trucks at summer concerts was also raised as an issue, um, and so we discussed that and what we <laughs> what we thought about it. Um, uh, currently, we just felt like you know that was something that um, wasn't something we would pursue at the moment. Yeah, I agree. 
That's all. We will be meeting, let's see, March 6th at 4.30 p.m. next meeting. Progress. Thank you, Chairwoman Baumgartner. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Chairman Dufresne. A couple items for action tonight. I think, Shane, you hand, just handed out the uh, excessive wait time policy, so we should all have it at our desk. It was in our last uh, packet, last meeting also, mm -hmm. so it's all the same. So this is essentially a excessive wait time for the ambulance for non-emergency transport, so not when you know somebody's having a health issue and stuff. This is when they're... Know, taking people to the hospital and to the doctor's office, correct? So if they make the ambulance wait around for longer than 30 minutes in the one situation and longer than 15 in the other, there's a fee policy that's in place here that they're suggesting and other municipalities that do this have the excessive wait time policy. So, you know, the committee uh, talked about this and, you know, we decided to bring it forward to, for approval here. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the excessive wait time policy for ambulance non-emergency transports beginning on June 1st, 2018. So we have time to let the public know that it's changing. So it's not just going to change tomorrow. There's a motion by Councilman Dufresne. Is there a second? Councilman Barrett. Um, any questions or discussion? Councilman Barrett. And these fees are generated off of what other local communities are charging? Uh, believe it or not, they're actually in your fee schedule. Uh, what we didn't have, though, was something to determine what really defined excessive weight. Okay. Um, but, you know, my understanding is they were already established. Okay. It's just that we never we never actually moved forward with, with doing it. Um, so what they wanted to do was better define it. Um, Chief, I, I'm correct when I say that, right? I, I apologize. Chief Price is actually in the room. Yeah. Um, the fee schedule, <laughs> since I've been in employed by the bill, <coughs> has included the dollar figures you see in the policy for excessive weight. Mm -hmm. However, the question that stopped it from ever getting implemented is, what is an excessive weight? Yeah. So when does that clock start ticking? And that's what we came up with with this policy is, if it's a round trip transport example, we're taking somebody to a doctor's appointment who needs a wheelchair. If we have to wait more than 30 minutes beyond the time of the appointment, the clock starts ticking every 15 minute increments. Yeah. If we're supposed to pick somebody up at nine in the morning to go to radiology or to, and they're not ready by 9.15, that's excessive wait. It's kind of like you call for a cab and you ask them to wait for you, the, meet, the meter's running. It, it makes perfect sense uh, to me. It, it, I, I just what was it curious does is where by us waiting, it may stop us from getting another transport in that day. Absolutely. I think we all understand that. Yeah, I think it's good. I was just curious where the, the basis was, but I actually did not realize that it was in the previous. It's been, it's in the, been historically it's been in, in the fee structure, two, just never enforced. The last enforced. two years of fee schedules, we have not touched the dollar amounts. We didn't address that at all. We went with what was already adopted yeah. and then just tried to determine what we want to consider an excessive wait time. Great. Chief, did we have a lot of cases that this would be just uh, around the ballpark? Yeah, we have a fair number. Okay. Um, that, there was one that I'm specifically aware of that uh, triggered this movement last month, and that was the crew was at the doctor's office over two hours. Wow. Okay, very good. And, and, you know, and for what we charge for transport, right. we're, I mean, we're spending taxpayer money at that point yep. that, that yep, we I, shouldn't I, be. I agreed. Thank you. Anybody else? Chief. Says we're not starting to June first because we're going to notify the, the public. How are we notifying the public? Um, Chief Hoffman has suggested that we would be uh, doing some sort of handout flyer to our most frequent users, and also uh, like the hospitals that use our transport service a lot, and some of the doctors' office where we go to a lot. We'll also do some press releases. Okay. Press releases, Facebook page, the normal me social media type stuff also. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Anybody else have anything? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. There are seven ayes. <clears throat> Next on the agenda here is the hiring process for part-time firefighters. Uh, we need to you know, move forward that process here. So talked about it at committee and going to make a motion uh, for the borough manager to begin the hiring process of part-time firefighters. There's a motion on the floor by Councilman Dufresne. Is there a second? 
Councilwoman Baumgartner, questions or discussion? Councilman Anders. Sure. Are we hiring then at minimum wage for this position currently? Well, we have we so it'll be temporarily a minimum wage. Right until a contract. Until is a contract negotiated. is negotiated. Would, they would bump to whatever that is set. Yes. Would be set. Correct. Okay. My so question was, you know, so up front they would know that during the interview process. That's going to be the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. But Anybody? we need to move forward with the process as Agreed, was, looking as, at the numbers. Discussed. Agreed. Anyone else? Does that automatically make them part of the union? No. Um, no, it, it doesn't. They, have, they would have to file a union card and all that good stuff, which creates a whole other mess. Um, well, that's what of, I'm thinking. Of when they would be eligible to be part of the union. Because we haven't set any of that. I mean, we don't have a contract yet. So there's mm -hmm. no, you know, set probationary period. There's no, I mean, we have, we have a lot of other things that we have to deal with there, but... What we're asking you guys right now is to let us start the process because we have a more immediate need, and that is to get people out there. Who is the final say on the hires? Me. Okay. Because they're part-time. Correct. And that's our policy right now. Yes. Okay. Our, Shane, are they subjected to what kind of background checks and everything? They will get a full-blown background. Everything Absolutely. FBI fingerprint? Yep. Okay. Yep, they have to. All right. Anybody else? Just, I guess the other thing is then... They will be able to participate in full training sessions and and such to assist them in getting any certifications needed. Well, part of part of it's going to be that they have to be certified. Like they have to have uh, completed their firefighter one um, and have all the necessary training to be a firefighter. I mean, we're not hiring. Um, yeah, listen, unless we absolutely have to, and we have to dig to the bottom of the barrel to. To get, just get bodies. Our goal is to hire certified firefighters that, you know, have training and and, and, okay. and skills and abilities that can actually do the work. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what they want to be employees for. Correct. I'm right. uh, just getting the general outline. Well. Yeah. Appreciate that. Anybody I mean, else? So, are we hiring for specific hours, or is it whenever need, they're available? Yeah, we need everything at this point. I mean, we really need day shift. Right. Um, but at this point, we really need. I mean. We need everything. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. All right. The next thing on the agenda here, Shane, this was in last meeting's packet too, I believe, because it's not uh, on our desk there. The donation of a modular trailer from uh, Lesta. Correct. There were meeting. There was uh, notes in the meeting minutes explaining in the meeting it. Minutes, yes. There's, there was yes. something in the last, in the meeting, in the last council. And there was something in the last council here. So, um, Shane, you want to go into small detail here <laughs> on what it is? Because <laughs> I know you have one stipulation here. Yeah, I do. And that's May, <laughs> May 2nd is, is that stipulation, um, which the fire chief knows very much about. He's laughing. Um, <laughs> well, he keeps trying to change the date on my whiteboard. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Lesta uh, is... Um, uh, the Lehigh uh, Emergency Services. Um, they have a, a trailer that uh, uh, they're willing to donate to the borough uh, to put at the training grounds. And what, we'll, what we would do with it, it's only five years old. So what we would do with it is kind of do a shift. We have some, we have some things that we are tearing down uh, on May 2nd. Um, and uh, what, what we want to do though is turn that into the, the, tr the training classroom. Take the training classroom that we currently have, the trailer for that, turn it into uh, what, what is essentially our smoke maze and completely tear down the smoke maze because it, that's at the point of no return uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, rot and, and, and some other issues with it. So there will be a kind of a transition of, of things. So May 2nd may not be that feasible for that stuff, but uh, um, I, our recommendation would be to accept that donation, though. Okay. Subject. Yep, I put that in my motion. Yeah, to, to the zoning. <laughs> Uh, zoning officers' approvals and, and Shane's desires, right? Yeah, yeah, and my, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. my name in there too. <laughs> so you you're making that in a formal I'll motion? A motion to approve the donation of the modular trailer from West is subject to the proper zoning approvals and Shane's. Motion by Councilman Dufresne, second by Councilman Barrett. Any questions or discussion, Councilman Anders? Um, I guess my question is, is is it coming up from their budget as far as the moving of it? How is that being relocated to 
our grounds. So can I invite the chief up here to answer that question again? Yes, please. I should just stay up here. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was pacing. He really wanted to uh, interrupt me there. <laughs> to answer your question, yes, maybe I don't know at this point. Okay. But we do we do believe we have the equipment to do it. The, yeah, we we think we have a big enough um, uh, trailer to to possibly haul it. Right. Okay. Um, you know, we have something that, that's similar to the little boy. It may fall off the back of the it's, truck. It may not. You said this, this modular, this? Yeah. This modular <laughs> classroom um, was purchased about five years ago and was in use at the Max South Fire Facility for three years. Um, when Allentown was considering selling that property off, they dismantled it and it's been in storage since. Oh. So. Um, we haven't gotten into the details of the logistics for relocating it to our facility at this point. Um, some of our public works employees feel that we have the equipment that should be able to do it. If not, other arrangements would need to be made, at which time we would probably be going back to Lesta for some assistance. Okay. That would, that, I guess that's just one of my concerns yeah. is we really didn't have a budget for it. What would the budget be? What would the cost be? Yeah. I mean, it's there will, there will be some installation costs on us, but I believe our training grounds budget could do that, such as hooking up utilities and things right. like that. Um, I figured that part was okay. All right. Thank you. All right, the only question I have is what is Lester? Because I've never seen it before, and uh, I, I just don't know what it is. Lehigh Emergency Services Training Association. Thank and you. And all their funding comes from Lehigh County. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Thank you, Chief. The last thing and nothing for nothing else for action here, but in the uh, notes here you see that a resident did uh, come to our meeting and ask about painting some lines and the parking lines in the 600 block of Chestnut Street. Um, just, you know, because you know, the average person, if there's parking lines, there will try to park within the line and, and free up some parking and stuff. Not everybody potentially, but the average person will <laughs> try to cooperate there. So um, the committee, through discussion, decided to suggest the public works to do the painting of the lines between the 500 and the 600 blocks of Chestnut Street to just see if that helps out. So, so again, nothing for action there, just an FYI. So unless there's any other questions, progress in the next meeting is March 13th, 2018, 3 o'clock. Thank you, Chairman Dufresne. And uh, we have painted lines in other parts of the borough, and it has worked out well. Uh, General Administration Committee is Chairman Leidenberg. That's myself. Um, really? We have nothing on the agenda? That uh, never we, happened. We canceled the other day. Yeah, oh, that's right. So our next meeting is March 1st. Um, which is a Thursday at 9 a.m. here in, in Borough Chambers. Budget and Finance Committee, Chairman Barrett. Uh, yes, we have two items for official action. The first is bill list, um, is the bill list resolution 2018-12, and I'll place that in the form of a motion. There's a motion by Councilman Barrett. Is there a second? Sorry. Councilman Dufresne, <laughs> questions or discussion on the bill list? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven council people in favor of paying the bills. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and the okay. second item uh, was discussed here at our, our meeting, and it has to do with um, some requests for from the general authority. Am I correct? Yeah, it's our annual request list. Right. And Oh, basically, are we just approving this letter? Is yeah. that what you're looking yes. for? Yeah. So uh, I'll place in the form of a motion that the letter is currently on your desk. It's addressed, dear authority members. Um, and I'll place that in, in the form of a motion to... Uh, what? I was just going to okay. say Yeah, to send that to the general authority. There's a motion by Councilman Barr. Is there a second? Councilman Dufresne. Um, this is something that we do every year. We request for certain items and they can choose what they want to pay for or just give it general donation and we pick off the list then. So this is something we've been doing for quite a while. Yeah, and, and I should mention we're always very appreciative of the efforts that they put in. Uh, it obviously makes a difference in us being able to fund those items. Absolutely. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes.
uh, and with that, I'll report progress. Thank you, Chairman Barrett. Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, Chairwoman McManaman. Thank you, Mr. President. So we, ha we do have a few things for tonight. Um, in reference to the fields at Indian Creek, um, Solicitor Dimmick, if you'd like to give us a brief overview and then I see that we've got some developers in the room, we'll ask them to come up and further explain their proposed I, I will try to be very brief in this. Uh, as you may have, well, most of you are, uh, who have been on council before have been aware of this process. This is a phased development of Indian Creek. We had given them preliminary plan approval. We normally start with preliminary plan, and then they come in for final plan on the various phases. They are in that stage. However, they had some disagreements with Upper Milford, I believe it was. We had encompassed some more of the property for development. Upper Milford objected to it. Uh, they resolved it, but when we had allowed that portion to come in, we, it changed the plan. And now they're changing the plan back to what it was before with an easement. Uh, so we have to do a subdivision and we have to do a land development for the phase, which is a land development plan. Um, you should be aware that the track does not front any highway, but our zoning officer has made a determination that that can still be used as an AQC, but not any other type of development. And that would be a condition of the approval. Um, now, they're both, first of all, I know this is your, some people's first time for subdivision. Subdivision is whether you divide up or consolidate or reformulate uh, land and the sizes of it. The land development is set forth basically in our, well, so subdivisions in it too, but the saldo tells you how, you know, what your curves have to be and your radius and your sidewalks and all sorts of things that have to be taken care of. And we have that reviewed by our engineer, by our zoning officer, by, by our office, and then it's reviewed by the committees. Uh, so it goes through a, an extensive uh, process. Um, so we don't get too many of these because we're pretty well built out, but it is part of the uh, Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Act that recalls for these very step-by-step um, -step procedures. So if I have not covered it well enough for the developers, if you would like to add anything, or if any council people have questions, they're here. Uh, would you like to add anything? Just introduce myself, Jim Preston, the attorney for the developer. We have Lou Rock, our engineer, is here uh, also. Uh, I, I believe what you stated is accurate. We, we, we have, you know, take any issue with the conditions that you proposed as to that particular piece. If the council has any questions, we'll certainly entertain those. My question was actually for our solicitor. It, if I'm understanding it correctly, so this is basically nullifying the agreement that we made on November 7th, 2016. We're basically reverting back to what had previously been approved, correct? Yes, and there, there, not, there won't be any houses on it, even though that's in the book. Correct. Yeah, no, I, and, and that's, that's how I understood it. I, I mean, it's partially I've, I've abstained from every vote simply for the fact that I own a real estate business and I've tried to, even though I know it's an abundance of caution and I've been told I don't need to do it, but I do it anyhow. No, it's okay. I'm so I wanted to make sure this really, this is actually, um, this is essentially nullifying what we had previously established, right? Okay. Yes. Councilman Anders. Just so the space in itself then will just be for, for current purposes, just basic open space, correct? Will there be dead end roads that just come to it and end, or is no? They'll, this the, the land itself <laughs> will be vacant. Uh, let me just see if I can explain it in a different way. We had the preliminary plan that didn't include the five and a half acres. Correct. That's the plan that everyone approved. And that was approved by there's actually three municipalities involved, Lower Mac, right. Upper Milford, and this borough. So they all approved that plan. From there on out, it's simply a process of walking through the approval procedures because once you get the preliminary plan, as long as you develop in accordance with that, 
and don't modify that, you're entitled to that final plan approval. Where this gets a little sticky is that at some point along that way, we, got at, we acquired the opportunity to purchase an additional five and a half acres. That's in the borough. Right. In order to purchase that, we had to first create it because it was part of a larger tract. So that was subdivided. Now the question becomes, okay, you've now created a new five and a half acre piece. In order to do that, it needs to have access to or frontage on some road system. So we appended it to that plan that I just mentioned, the original plan. That gave us a way to get access. Unfortunately, what happened, and, and we didn't propose any development for it. We just had it on there. Unfortunately, other municipalities use that as a hammer to say, aha, you're, you've, you no longer have the same preliminary plan, so we're not obligated to approve these plans, and we're going to make certain demands upon you. So to escape that, if you will, what we're doing is we're sending the five and a half ba acres back. We can't send it back from whence it came because we have to append it back to the pair of tracks. And we bought it, we own it. It has its own tax map parcel number. So we have to park it. That's the right way to say it. So by, what we're doing is we've worked with uh, your staff is we are removing it from our development. The Indian Creek, we're taking it away from that. We're letting it stand as a, as a standalone lot. There is a covenant that we're going to agree to. That's the note that we're going to agree on the plan, that it can't be further subdivided or developed, except as an AQC, unless and until it gets access to some public road or highway. So we're, we're, we're accepting the risk of that. We're just going to let it sit there. I, I'm pretty confident in telling you that it will one day be developed as everyone suspected that it would. But for now, but it, it could be denied as well in the future. I'm sorry. No, no, no. it will be. Um, you know, when, uh, be careful because yeah, this I hasn't been easy. Get too yeah, much into that right now. Yeah, 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 we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to speculate that. on the future. Let's just yeah. talk about what we're doing here. Right? Yeah, let's let's let that go. I, I think the easiest I think thing that is fight's been fought. what Mr. Barrett said is we're going back to where we were. Yeah. That's They're correct. Stuck with it. They're stuck with an extra yeah, yeah, five yeah, acres okay. right now. Yeah, that that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Chairwoman okay. McMahon, um, would you like to make a motion to approve resolution? Yes. Uh, 2010 um, or 2018 10. Well, can I do this in uh, both of them at the same time? No. Okay. Separate. So then, yes, um, the, the CRD committee recommends adoption. All right, there's a motion resolution. by uh, Cha Chairwoman Count, uh, McManaman. Is there a second? Uh, Councilman Shipsta? Questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Those abstaining say aye. Aye. And then you'll fill your form out. All right. Which leads us to resolution 2010-11. Would you like to place that in a form of a motion also? Yes, please. There's a motion by Councilwoman McManaman. Is there a second? Councilman Shipsta. Any questions or discussion on resolution 2018-11? Uh, Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Those abstaining? Aye. Councilman um, Barrett. I need everyone to sign both yes. resolutions before you leave tonight, please. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the next thing on the um, our agenda is for the Emmaus Public Library kickoff event. Um, every year they have a kickoff and closeout event for the club, and this year um, this is for the reading club. Um, this year, the theme is Libraries Rock. They'd like to hold this on June 16th and to have a 30 by 60 tent with a band. So um, the questions at committee were things like um, parking, which is <coughs> adequate, uh, well, whether that will interfere with construction, which it will not. Um, uh, Mr. Pepe uh, encouraged Mrs. Resch to talk to Alan Lewis about the electrical because of the band and the stage with the, right. the tent. So um, we're recommending to council that we take, that we accept. To allow them to put the tent up. Yes. There's a motion on the floor by Councilwoman McManaman. Is there a second? Councilman Shripsta, questions or discussion? Councilman Anderson. Just the only thing I would check, um, just to alert them, is if there are softball tournaments down there that weekend, that you alert them that they may have to park elsewhere and maybe give the library some space there. It's Might public parking. It is. I, I realize that. But I think they'll be okay. Anybody else? 
I mean, I, I don't know where to send them to. They could park with the softball could easily oh. park down at the. So get the library people. Board, yes. yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Um, and let me know if you have any questions when you re review the committee minutes. Uh, our next meeting is Thursday, March 15th. Progress. Thank you, Chairwoman McManiman. Uh, there are various boards and commission meeting minutes and uh, just general in information like newsletters. Um, and there's also four end of the year reports by fire, ambulance, and uh, police and what's EMA? Emergency management. Emergency management. And emergency management. All right, personal appeals oh, part. You need to take action on the pension board. What was discussed, call us. <coughs> yes. voting on that tonight, Shane? No. Remember it was gonna be in Oh, March. actuarial. We have to wait to see if yeah. Oh, that's right, March. sorry. If we need an actual aerial study or not. Um, okay, personal appeals part two. If anyone has a personal appeal, approach the podium. Hearing none, borough manager's report. Um, significant revenue and expense items for the first half of February are in your, in your iPads. Uh, other than that, uh, we have an executive session that we, we need to discuss personal matter. Will there be any action taken after that? Probably. Okay. But I think we're going to need this room because the general authority is meeting next door. And I haven't heard them leave yet. Yeah. So. Okay. We don't want to, well, we can always check. Yeah. Progress? Yeah, yeah, if you have any questions, otherwise, progress. All right. President's business. Um, I have nothing other than it was a beautiful day today, wasn't it? A little spring fever. We'll get one more day, and then we'll be back to somewhat wet, uh, cold weather. We'll be in the 40s, but it's not the 60s. Um, with that being said, I will call executive session for personnel matter, which we will possibly take action on afterwards. Um, and we will go in to executive session at 7.48. Um, I'll see if the other rooms. Okay. Oh. Uh, we're reconvening at 8 o'clock. Um, do we have a motion to bring forward? We uh, received a letter of resignation from uh, James Maust from uh, Ambulance Corps. Yeah, from the Ambulance Corps. Ambulance Corps. And would somebody like to make a motion to accept the letter of resignation? Councilman Anders, uh, seconded by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Motion passes. Um, Motion to adjourn. Councilman Dufresne, seconded by Councilman Barrett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. I wanted to discuss that. Meeting adjourned at 8.01. <laughs>